Hello, hello everyone, this is Kiru Show here. And whenever we last left off, Deku and Mei have met and they were actually forging weapons together. Now, he did give her a bit of criticism on some of the stuff she's creating. And she would have immediately just tell Deku that he all he does is smith weapons, so he has no right to talk about her designs. Cause they're very they're very, very advanced for whatever he's doing. He would then look down at one of the papers saying that there's a flaw right here. She would say no there isn't, and she'd snatch it out of his hand and look at it. She would then immediately just say Ah, oh, shit, you're right. No. Yes, she would say that. Now then, after that, Deku's dad would walk in saying that it's nearly two in the morning. Who is that? Deku would say that this is one of his friends, May. And she, he met her whenever he went to go get stuff for forging. And she and him, that did not sound good, him and her have been doing some forging and actually working on designs for stuff for the last month, and they've even been doing some training for the, to get into UA next year. Deku's dad would just be nodding as he would then walk back inside. And he would come back outside a couple minutes later as they're still working on stuff with some hot cocoa. May would actually really like the hot cocoa because one thing I know about May Hatsume is her favorite candy is chocolate. And she eats chocolate a lot instead of drinking coffee because not only does it stimulate the area of the brain, that produces the chemical to help keep you awake. But coffee does that too. But coffee also tinkles. Well, tinkle, tinkles. It also tickles that part of your brain that makes you need to go to the bathroom. So that's why if you drink anything with caffeine in it, you often need to go to the bathroom a lot. And basically chocolate, you get the same thing, but without having to stop for breaks. Yeah, Horikoshi actually, he, even for side characters, he puts in a lot of thought. Like the fact that the reason we didn't see Bakugo's room during the room, during the room tour, was literally because Bakugo is a fan of romance novels, and he has a big collection in his room. Not because he's an All Might fan and probably has the same room style as Deku, no, it's because he's a giant bookcase full of romance novels. Anyways. Yeah, if you guys don't believe me, you can look that fact up. Um, I found it online, and it kind of made a little bit more sense to me now. Anyways. Now then. After that, Deku and Mei, they would be training. Well, Deku would have told her that Right now, I don't think that working on the designs is going to be a problem. And he would actually help her solve a lot of things with her designs and stuff like that. And she would help him study. He would create small project pieces for her to use to actually help her better. And since she has better equipment, and a person who has more information on the subjects he has... And also is essentially helping getting more training. Yeah, she's going to be in 1A. Anyways. Now then. After that. <coughs> Deku would help her get to some basic weight training. Doing all that. <clears throat> in a little minute. 
Now then, sorry about that. I had something stuck in my throat, so I had to spit it out. Now then, Deku and Mei, they would be doing a lot of standard training. Deku's doing regular training for him, which is basically Jesus Christ, what is wrong with you training? While well, Mei's trying to keep up doing regular training. Now, I want to say she probably does have a very good physical body. Because she does do a lot of support gear stuff, so she would have to move around heavy objects and pieces like that. So, this would actually not be very hard for her to do, but it's just she's having a bit of trouble keeping up with Midoriya. Now then. They are talking about it one day in the shop that Deku's forging metal and talking about a design flaw he thinks he found in one of the things he's trying to make. This is whenever she would tell him that, really, just give me the blueprints. As soon as Deku would turn his head, the hot metal would actually catch his hair on fire. Now, after putting his hair out, this is whenever he would say that he actually does need a haircut now. May would say that she doesn't think that he needs a haircut. It's that the way the burns are, he might need to completely cut everything off. Deku would be sad by this, but actually agree to it. So she would shave his head. And Deku's dad would have walked in after hearing the commotion and see that she's shaving his head. He's asking what's going on. Deku would explain that his hair caught on fire, so he's she's cutting it all off. Now then. After helping Mei do all that, because she's doing a very poor job, Deku is probably... He's not, like, to the skin ball, but there's still, like, some stubble there, so you can actually, like... You can feel around his head and feel, like, the small dots poking up for hair growth. Now, this is whenever she would look at Deku as he turns around, and she would somewhat see this, but more of Deku's shape of face, and less badass with a garage behind him. Now, then, after that... She would immediately want to snap a picture, but she doesn't have a camera on her. So she would just she would add a camera to her goggles so that she can actually capture pictures and stuff like that. So now then, hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I got an idea of what to do. After that, Deku and May. May is actually somewhat. She's a little bit around superhuman levels with the ability to. She can lift around 250 pounds. Very, very strugglingly, but. She can also rope to around, let's say, 20 to 25 miles with a lot of the weight training and stuff that she's been able to help Deku with and do with Deku. And Deku's Quirk Alpha, it enhances his physical body and everything about him. I think I forgot to mention that it also makes him smarter or just gives him a better understanding of learning. So basically, if you were to try and teach him a language... And it would averagely take about a year or two to fully become... Basically, if you were trying to teach him a language, he can become native to that language in about a third or a fourth of the time it would normally take a regular person. So instead of a year, it could be three months or four. Depending on his understanding of things. So he would have immediately picked up smithing and a lot of design stuff. So Deku, for the last, let's say the last month of their, of their training, and them working on stuff in the forge, Deku just calls it the forge because he likes that name. 
they are actually talking about better designs and Deku would actually help her write up some better ones. This is basically more advanced versions of the gear she's using in the sports festival with basically two fans on the bottom, a lighter build, more power, and a better grappling hook. Because, not a better grappling hook, but a more advanced grappling hook along with better gear. And she can actually basically, this stuff would basically be where the fans are on the side of her shoes. But as soon as she would turn on her designs, the fans would start spinning and actually come up underneath her feet. And she also has some combat-oriented gloves, along with a flamethrower, and she basically has, like, these wire wires all sticking out of her arms. Some of this stuff is actually flamethrowers, some of it's actually small missiles. Basically, Mark I Iron Man, which does not sound too bad for a girl in a garage. Now that after doing some of this building stuff, I noticed I'm bringing a lot of Iron Man type stuff into this whenever people don't really have the physical capabilities. It still works. I just have to draw away from that because I might just turn everyone into Iron Man. Except for Deku. Not yet. Now, after this... She would have a flamethrower, small missiles, and let's say that she can at least punch really hard. So she has like, well not metal boxing gloves, but at least she has hand wraps and also just some gloves with cushioning inside them. But they're covered in a steel lining and lead lining to where she can actually punch with quite a lot of force, breaking through robots. And she would have tested out these gloves actually punching through a bit of a wall. Now, the final night before going to the entrance exam, Deku's dad would walk out in the garage telling them that they need to they really need to stop because they need to get enough sleep and she needs to go home. But he would just walk out to them doing this. With, well not coffee, but they at least had some form of hot cocoa. And they're both basically cuddling up and falling asleep. Now that sounds very cool, actually. Because... It's less weird than some of the uh, what ifs where Deku is basically in a hospital bed and his love interest just cuddles up next to him. So it's basically like an actual romance thing. And Bakugo is somewhere reading a book about that. Now then, after that, Deku and Mei would go to the entrance exam. They would sit nearby each other with probably someone in between them. I'd say that in this, what if they went to the same school? Hmm. But they... They could see each other somewhat around, but they couldn't really talk very much. So they would only interact most of the time outside of school. Now then. The day for the entrance exam would happen. And whenever they're walking in, she actually got signed off on a lot of her gear, except for one thing, which she's disappointed about. And I'm not going to say what this one thing is, but yeah, she's really disappointed about it. And Deku's saying that, well, you can't really use those here because of how many people are around. And we're basically fighting against robots, so... This is more of a combat capability thing, so 
they're they're still unstable to use right now. You know that, right? She's saying that, yeah, she knows, but she's still disappointed. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then lucky you. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna be bringing these in a bit later. Now, after that, they're going through the battlefields. Deku doesn't trip because. Hey, different Deku. Now, Deku and Mei are actually in the same area. They are talking, and they are actually doing all that. And Deku would see... He would see Ida, but he would ignore him. Ida would have asked, what is a young pro doing here? He's, he just says he's not a pro. And walks by him. Ida really wants to question him further, but he's realizing that looking at everyone else and looking at him and Deku, that they might look like the oldest ones here. So he would just stay quiet. Now, after that, <sighs> Deku and Mei are talking, and they would actually go through and actually take out a lot of robots. Deku is actually parkouring around a lot, taking some down. And people would think that he might have a sticky quirk or something like that, because he's not really ever seen going away from the buildings. He's seen with one hand constantly touching a building. And people wouldn't believe this until they would look up and they would see Deku tackle a robot off of a third story, smashing it into the ground. He's then going around and actually punching and jumping off a lot of buildings to build up momentum, to kick through certain things, and punch through them. Mei is actually using quite a bit of her gear. She's shooting, she's shooting some of her homemade projectiles. Some of them wouldn't work, so she'd actually have to use the flamethrower. She'd get lucky and melt a couple wires on the inside of them. And take them down. Now, after that, she would have actually used some of her gear. And, hmm, actually, that's a smart idea. She would have actually built in some fans on her hands that she could use a bit better. And one thing that she can do is, because there's more than one fan on her wrist, is that she can actually move these fans in front of her flamethrowers, and actually fire the flamethrower through it, and actually basically suck out more oxygen, making the flame burn harder and harder, to actually melt through a lot of the robots. People are looking at this, and they're thinking that that's pretty cool, but what is going on? Now, the zero pointer would appear, and everyone's running away. May's saying that that thing is huge, and some of her babies won't even, even some of her babies won't even phase that thing. Deku's saying that you don't need to use them because he'll he's taking he's taking this one. He's got this, but. They would both then hear Ochako shouting for help. This is when he would say, "Okay, I'm gonna need your help then. I'm gonna hold. Down, I'm gonna hold. Try and hold back the robot while you get her out of there. Can you do that?" She would then just say yes as they would both begin going over there. Now, May being able to essentially fly somewhat like Iron Man. Would get over there faster, and Deku being advanced with more speed. He's running over there. They would both get there a little bit at the same time. As he would then immediately throw the rubble out from underneath it. Some of the heavier rubble, and then start climbing with the robot's legs. Now, whenever he's climbing, he actually is using his knives. Which he made earlier in, this, in the last part, and or in this part. Now, these are some pretty good knives, and they're really cool. So, after doing that, 
he would find one of the robot's like knees, so basically a weak point, and he's ripping out as much wires as he can and actually doing that. And he would actually get rid of one of the hydraulic systems in its leg. Basically, he's destroying the bone in the robot's leg because those pistons always need to be moving in order for the robot to stay in working condition. And if one of those pistons get damaged, then the entire system can come crashing down. Now, as soon as that would happen, the robot's leg entirely stops, and everything else with the robot keeps trying to move. So the robot would come towering forward as Deku would jump off its leg and actually come down to Mei. And he would move them into an alley and shield them from the blast. Or the sound that's coming out of it. They would then immediately come out of it. Deku is saying that he's glad no one got hurt. Mei and Ochako are trying to process what just happened and tell Deku that there's something on his shoulder. That it's poking out from his back. Deku would then immediately look over his shoulder and he would grab it and he would pull out a chunk of metal. He was saying that, oh, that's what that was. He thought he felt someone back there. May is intrigued by what she just saw, and Ochako is trying not to puke, because this is a very bloody piece of metal, along with the fact that Deku still has some more shards in his back. Because that was not something he can get away without getting a couple scratches on him. Along with the fact that a lot of the metal he ripped out actually was sent flying through the shockwave the Zero Pointer made. So, Deku would go see Recover Girl, get recovered. All Might would actually send this letter to Deku. Mei gets in 1A. Deku scored the highest. Deku is at home when he receives the letter. And whenever it comes in the mail, Deku's dad just says that... Well, whenever there's a knock on Deku's door... All Might would say that he's here to give young Midori his letter because he scored the highest. Deku, Deku's dad trying not to go into cardiac arrest and seeing All Might in front of him, would just say that he's in the garage out in the backyard. Or he's out in the garage in the lower, like on the bottom story of the complex. All Might would just jump off. And this is whenever Deku would see All Might. And All Might would give him the offer of One for All. Now, I'm going to leave that part here, guys. And, yeah, you already know Deku's going to get One for All. So, anyways, that is where I'm going to be leaving this What If off of. And I'm going to be recording the Meliodas What If very soon. And if I seem to be a bit more hyperactive... I finally received a package I ordered from Snack Crate. I got some Guriana energy drink along with some shapes from Australia. I also have a lot of other stuff I want to look through the Snack Crate about, about but it took a, long, a little while to get here. And it's actually really good because I only got it for $7 and it's a lot of stuff. That is not a paid promo. I just I've never had one of these, and a lot of these taste I'm I'm trying. A lot of these foods I'm trying are actually a new taste to me. It's very weird because they're familiar, but they're not. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah, I'm gonna be recording the other part very shortly.